What's going on everybody? My name is Tomas and in this one I'm going to be reviewing the transporter sync made by Connected Data. The Connected Data folks were kind enough to send me this review unit including a 500 gigabyte USB 3.0 external hard drive. Uh, without them this video would not have been possible. So let's get started. I'm going to talk a little bit about what is the transporter uh, while I unbox this. What is transporter? It's a tangible means to you creating your own personal cloud. What do I mean by tangible? Well, it's just that. It's a way to set up and manage your own cloud in your own home, office, or both. Your data isn't stored in a data warehouse somewhere you don't have access to it. One question I had when I first got my hands on this was, why transporter? First, I wanted to have complete control over the data I put into the cloud. So with that, I wanted to have the utmost level of privacy. I've been really standoffish of storing important documents in the cloud because most terms of cloud storage um, agreements state very definitively that they can access, review, distribute, and delete your files at any time. That doesn't sit well with me. Uh, secondly, cost. If you want more than the free allotted amount of storage, you're, you're going to have to pay for it and probably pay for it big time. For example, one terabyte of Google Drive storage will run you $9.99 USD per month at the time of this video, that is. That's $120 a year, and that pricing will go indefinitely until they raise the price, of course. In addition to that, you're tied into one terabyte of space forever unless you want to pay an extra premium for additional storage. Transporter and Transporter Sync allow you to increase storage as easily as simply unplugging a USB drive and replacing it with one that has more storage. Okay, so what sets Transporter apart from a traditional cloud provider? The first thing, and probably the most interesting thing to me, is Transporter is multi-location. Transporters are able to share and communicate with each other. This is a unique peer-to-peer -peer capability that offers many advantages. Uh, to name a couple, automated off-site protection, uh, if you store a transporter outside your home, and then fast local performance, so you can work off these drives. Uh, the shared local folders sync across multiple machines. And that's awesome. I'll demonstrate that in a, a little explanation part later in this video. The next thing, it's 100% private. You own and control your transporter. So all the data is stored only on specific transporters, computers, and mobile devices. Data is shared from device to device. It is never stored in a cloud. And most importantly, it is always encrypted during transit. Unlimited sharing. Transporter has no restrictions on file type or file size. But with that, you want to keep in mind your bandwidth uh, limitations that your ISP or your internet service provider have on your uh, specific situation. Global access. All files stored on a transporter are available anywhere in the world from any Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, or Kindle Fire device with internet access, of course. And along those lines, your data is always protected. A full copy of shared files can be kept on multiple transporters and changes to any file are automatically synced in real time. That's a big benefit. And finally, and most important, there are never any fees. Transporter is defined by Connected Data on their website as a buy and own experience. Subscriptions to cloud services can be exponential by comparison, are reoccurring, and are inevitably going to increase at some point. Transporter shows their true cost upfront and that to me is a big benefit. All right, so in typical Tomas fashion, let's test this thing. I'm gonna first test the USB 3.0 drive. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just go st straight through USB 3.0 and see what kind of speeds we're getting with that. Looks like we're getting about 100 write and 100 read. One stipulation with this, you wanna make sure whatever hard drive you're plugging into the transporter or transporter sync is completely free of any data that you don't wanna lose because the transporter will format that drive. So all data on those drives that you plug in into these uh, devices will be erased and formatted. One thing, formatting can take up to an hour. My 500 gigabytes was completely clean when I plugged it in, so it took about 20 minutes. I don't know if it will take longer if there's data on the drive, but I, I do know that it only took me 20 minutes to format completely. And formatting is signified by the green and blue blinking uh, lights around the ring of the transport sink. I'm gonna go ahead and test the transporter sync with Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. At this point, I'm going to select the folder. So this folder is stored locally on your machine. So that means that you're utilizing the hardware that's on the machine that you're using. So the disk reads and writes you are seeing are being written in and read from the hard drive that is on the local machine that you're using. Uh, that's kind of a mouthful. So essentially it's just using your system, but this folder is being synced elsewhere. So I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So testing the reads and the writes to the hard drive that's connected to the transporter sync is a little 
little bit difficult because you cannot select the transporter library uh, when looking for a select disk in Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. So I thought of a, another way that we could test this. I have a 500 megabyte test DMG that I'm going to transfer to the library and see how long it takes. It takes roughly 30 seconds to complete, which isn't bad, but it isn't great either. So in a nutshell, that's the performance of the transporter sync. All right. So let's talk about what is the benefit to this. And uh, I couldn't think of a better way to uh, describe it other than this. Transporter has two sets of files, which would be one is a library and one is a sync folder. So the, the sync folder uh, resides locally on your system. There's a huge benefit to this especially if you're a professional that uses uh, different machines. Uh, let's say you have it, you have a Mac Pro, don't make fun of my, my drawing, and then you have a, a laptop that you carry around every once in a while that you work on both of these systems. Um, managing uh, versions or working on a project could become uh, cumbersome. Um, um, there are some options to that, so you can carry a, a USB external hard drive, which isn't very uh, practical, I would say, because you can lose it. Um, data corruption becomes a problem, et cetera, et cetera. So Transport has this unique feature where uh, they share this one folder. Um, and then let me switch colors and draw this little sink here in blue. Uh, this is connected to your, your router and your modem. Um, so this manages two different folders on these two different systems. So whenever you make a, a change to this folder, it is reflected on both systems, which is a huge benefit. It's a huge benefit because now you no longer have to worry about uh, carrying uh, around your external hard drives and whatnot because what you're essentially working on is a local copy of your project on both systems. That is a benefit in and of itself. Um, you, you could use remote logins and whatnot, but uh, again, why not just have this folder on your systems because you're logging in and it's syncing across the two systems. With this, if this is a, a, a slow uh, Windows XP machine and you're working in Premiere or whatever, um, that's a little uh, irrelevant at this point, but you can harness the, the hardware of this Mac Pro of the project that you are working on on this slow older machine. That's huge. That's a big deal. To me, that's, uh, that's worth the $99 USD by itself. You wouldn't even have to connect a USB hard drive to it. It's changed the way my workflow works. Hopefully this explanation uh, shows the true benefit of Transporter and what it brings to the table. Um, forgive me for my uh, crappy little drawings. Everything that's within this folder can take advantage of the hardware here. So whatever you're reading and writing on this system will go to this folder. And then outside of that, you can do the same with this one. So if this wasn't a, an older machine and it was just as fast or as whatnot. All right, so to close out this lengthy review, I know I didn't touch on everything. Like um, one major thing that I missed was um, the transporters talking to each other. And I skipped on that because I only have one transporter and I didn't have the, the opportunity to test how that works. But essentially it, it works the same way as the synced folder. Um, just along the lines of syncing a library uh, in multiple locations. So, for example, you could store one at your parents' house or at your friend's house because that's an off-site backup. So I'm going to close this one out by talking about some pros and cons. I could only find one con with this, uh, this thing, and it's, it's a significant one, and it may be a deal breaker for some of you. Example, uh, if you unplug the hard drive that's connected to the, the sync or the transporter, that hard drive... Uh, is formatted in a way that Mac OS 10 cannot read. So essentially you're, you're, you're not only buying into Transporter, you're, you're buying into them securing your data. So if you have a Transporter failure, you cannot recover that data without another Transporter. There, it's similar to the Drobo thing. If you commit to Drobo, uh, you can't recover your data without another Drobo box. Moving on to the pros, <laughs> they significantly outweigh the the cons because there's only one con that i could come up with the the syncing of folders across multiple uh, workstations is huge i think they really they are they're onto something here and i understand there's remote logins and all that stuff because i i currently do that with my work but outside of that having being able to harness the hardware on de uh, multiple machines and work seamlessly without without skipping a beat without using external hard drives without remote logging in etc cetera, etc cetera. the time savings that you may realize uh, with that is is uh, extraordinary and the guys at connected data really 
uh, thought this through and, and definitely haven't really marketed this. I think they should switch gears a little bit uh, per se and maybe market this to professionals that work on, you know, they have a, a desktop system and then they have a laptop when they're mobile. Uh, in addition to that, it, all the stuff is synced uh, seamlessly through Android and iOS, which brings me to another point that I completely skipped over as review purposes. Um, I didn't want to make this a 30 minute review, but it could easily go that long. I'm going to go ahead and close this video for now. I'm going to leave pricing and availability down in the description of this video. Just click show more and you'll see I'll, I'll redirect you to an Amazon link and I'll also link you to their website. And before I get out of here though, I, I do want to say thank you to Jim and Joe. Uh, those guys, without them, uh, neither this or the Drobo video that I have and I'll, I'll link to that as well. These videos would not have been possible without these guys. Um, I sincerely thank them. Uh, for giving me the, a small time channel like myself the opportunity to review their great products and for that thank you um, i'm gonna get out of here now thanks that about does it for me in this one if you like this video please leave a thumbs up if you didn't leave a thumbs down i value your feedback so feel free to comment and ask questions as well after you're done liking disliking commenting or sharing go ahead and check out some of my other videos in addition to that check out my channel if you like what you've seen here and what you've seen on my channel, you're more than welcome to subscribe. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Take care.